Okay, I believe this is episode 57. All right, that's the introduction. How are you, Craig? I'm doing good, man. I see you, man. Good to see you, too. So, Chris Gazzik and Craig Graves, we invite you to see the world through the lens of a real mental health and substance abuse therapist through this podcast. It is not the delivery of therapy services in any way, but our goal is to create emotional growth. Being aware that this is not the delivery of therapy services in any way. I just figured I'd repeat that because I started to say the sentence, Craig. Yeah. And I thought, you know, it's kind of like a cheer in a football game, man. Once you start going, you can't stop, right? That's true. (laughs) The human emotional experience. Shall we figure this thing out together? We shall. All right, man. So uh, we have our very first time that we have put it through. Uh, the show and the introductions part here a uh, via email. We got an email and we got a listener correction, Craig. Oh, really? Have, have you ever, you listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff. You ever hear them on shows? You know, like I like uh, Stuff You Should Know is a cool, cool show. And they, they have a regular spot now per, pretty much uh, years in where they have listener corrections and things like that. I don't hear a lot of corrections, but I don't, I don't think the podcasts I listen to, they're, they're mainly conversations about topics. Mm-hmm. And um, I just don't hear a lot of corrections. Maybe there, maybe there, maybe there are none. I don't know. I'm not sure yeah. how to handle one. Yeah, they, they 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 do that on the show regularly, and, and because they do they do massive amounts of just real broad general topics. It's a cool show. I mean, you know the name, right? Stuff you should know. So, so anyway, they get corrections all the time. This is our first one, and we 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 stand to be corrected, Craig. Yeah, we want to make sure we get it right. We're not too uh, egotistical to say. Yeah, we can't be wrong. Yeah, I, I, I definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, so, uh, so this is if you recall, man, about the service animals. Yeah, right. And we were kind of like, and I think definitely me. I mean, got a little defensive. I did on like, uh, yo, man, this this episode, and we pointed it out on the the science versus show that uh, they were they were poo pooing it pretty good, man. Yeah, and and I, I know I think you joined me with it pretty much that we were like, yo, man, that's that's not cool. Like it, it does work. It's it absolutely, man, it works. We definitely got our feathers ruffled. We we witnessed it happen. We did. Which, by the way, guys, check that episode out because we we literally saw and it was recorded on the show a, a, a real impact of service animal. On our guest who 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 has debilitating medical stuff going on, and it was, I mean, it was fascinating. It was one of the coolest moments of the show so far. I think honestly, we've had several, but that was up there, right? Yeah, that was definitely cool. Yeah. So what they pointed out though in this email, and thank you. Uh, I'm going to leave the name, but thank you for pointing it out on the episode of Science Versus. They they really kind of you know talked about uh, service animals not being effective, like, you know, rats on planes, literally, guys, rats on planes for emotional support. And, you know, there's a peacock somewhere over in Australia, I think. Don't quote me, but, you know, it's like, you know, some stuff that's just kind of over the top. And that's that's kind of what they were focusing on. And, Craig, I just played it for you. You heard how brief it was. In the beginning of the show, they definitely did say, and the emailer pointed out, non-trained service animals so that these are they were talking about animals that didn't have a specific training or purpose yeah okay that yeah and john who was on our show right specifically talked about the quality of training as a major issue yeah because he said people were getting ripped off because they were paying high dollar for dogs that weren't sufficiently trained yeah so the training's a huge huge i mean that's really it right yeah it, i think so i it, that it's an unregulated industry and i think john even called it the wild wild west pretty much you know I mean, yeah but if you find a reputable dog trainer then and they you're give, getting it you're getting you're getting it yeah right amazing stuff really. yeah and, and just to kind of recap a little the dogs go through a selection process so not any dog can be a service dog i mean they go through a selection process only the best ones are chosen to even go through the the training and then they're trained extensively yeah well yeah and and and, and i think even the language that you're using there craig you, you know service dog is the thing right i mean it's a it is kind of an unregulated industry so they were talking about on science versus service animals right and a service dog but 
you know, an emotional support animal. There are these weird terms. I think we did a good job on our show kind of wading through that, but yeah. there's no major regulatory agency and whatnot, even with trained dogs and animals, to, 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 to give credence to those terms. That's true. That's one of the points John brought up on the show, too, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, I think yeah. we did a good job covering it. Yeah. That show. But thank you for emailing in. If you hear anything we ever say, because sometimes we are, we're just chatting it up, too. And, and um, you know, I think Club Craig's pretty close to perfection, but I've, I'm by far not. <laughs> and uh, things might slip out that need a correction from time to time. So thank you so much to you who emailed in. Very appreciative of that. Very appreciative. And you can email us at contact at through com. I get it directly. And uh, I, I think that Craig, right now I'm willing to make a statement that we respond to hundred percent pretty quickly. Yeah. We're going to be, I think you do. I don't, I don't, I don't really manage that, but I think you do a pretty good job of it. Yeah. And we're not uh, monstrously large yet to, here, let me ask Run you something over. now. I don't. I wanted to. I didn't even tell you about this in the pre-show conversation because I wanted to get your. We didn't really have one tonight. <laughs> I wanted to get your raw reaction. Sweet, to I this do that thing. to you all the time, man. But I posted this on our Facebook page earlier this week, and I don't know if you saw it or not. Okay. But, but John Hopkins, what, what would you say John Hopkins is? Probably one of the most reputable. Oh yeah, they're pretty solid. Yeah, they're pretty solid. I think I know where you're going to. They yeah. have opened up a center for psychedelic research. <laughs> Can yeah. you believe that? I, you know, John Hopkins, pretty top line. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean that's like probably the prime medical research. I would say or one I don't of know them. If I'd say the, but yeah, it's one of them. Definitely one of them. Undisputably one probably, of them. Probably top yeah. Five, so they're yeah. they've opened up a research center to for, for psychedelic drugs. Researchers use uh, to use psychedelics to study the mind and identify therapies for diseases such as addiction. PTSD and Alzheimer's. I am raw with this, and uh, I'll tell you, I'm a skeptic, man. I, I'm, I am a skeptic, uh, but an interested skeptic, really, because the, the amounts that we're learning, even our nutrition conversation, you know, about uh, the keto and the fatty uh, content that you, you need to replenish your brain. Like, dude, we need to make that into a short. In fact, we probably will, because... We're learning so much, Craig, about the intricacies and the wiring of the neuron process in our brains. And, and, and what I've seen a little bit on the peyote trips and the psychedelic treatments that are, are there seem to have something to do with sort of rewiring that very intricate neurotransmitter process. And we know that that is a major center of the brain for the biological aspects of all of mental health. Boy, addiction, I don't know. I'm even more of a skeptic in that. So you said you've seen right. these things when you've been on peyote trips? Is that what you said? <laughs> That's what it sounded like you said. That is not what it, I said, It sounded man. like you said that. It did sound like you said that. <laughs> you see a lot more when you're on a peyote trip, <laughs> I think, than that. No, I think it's fascinating. I, I, I don't, I've, I've been reading some stuff. I know, you know you're interested I've, in it. Yeah, and uh, ironically, I've talked about Tim Ferriss a couple times, and yeah. he is one of the major guys that got this thing going at John Hopkins. He's one of the major investors. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? There's a, sep- there's a separate article, and I'll try to post it too, that just talks about Tim Ferriss' role in this whole thing at John Hopkins. See, that is super cool stuff. And honestly, audience, man, that's cutting edge. I'm, I'm skeptic because I haven't seen it come through my uh, – how do I want to put that? Like, like my, my streams of um, – I, th- I think I'll say my streams of training and, and ongoing continuing education. I ain't seen that stuff yet. So that's yeah, that's kind of somebody. Well, interesting. The, the, the interesting thing about psychedelics, um, I think that obviously if, if this goes anywhere, that would be used in a controlled environment surrounded by medical staff. And, and, and I think they're doing this in other, other countries now, just not in, in America. But uh, cultures have used psychedelic drugs for yeah. Thousands of years, man. Yeah. You know, so I think that the reason we're skeptical in our culture is just because of the, the uh, you know, the, it's, it's, a, it's an illegal drug and it's been demonized. And some of the things we talked about maybe with the CBD episode, um, you know, they're just right. stereotypes. And I, and I really, I, I think it's cool that the, the John Hopkins said the, the researchers there have an open mind enough to, 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 to dig into this thing. It's totally cool. And, and, and you're right, though. Interesting, Craig, though, as far as the stereotypes go, I like the 
Boy, I don't want to put this so I don't get creamed. I like the regulation that we have in like the FDA and with medications and approved management in the psychiatric world. You don't want rogue people claiming valid treatments and stuff. For instance, you go to a therapist who's licensed, they have a governing body and they regulate that stuff and it needs regulated because there's some there's some of us out there and ain't quite right. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I haven't noticed. <laughs> right. I haven't noticed, man. <laughs> And, and, and so, we, you know, I like that. I, 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 the levels of regulation, I don't know. But, that's, but I'll put that out there for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be following that just to see where it goes. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. That'll, that'll be interesting. Uh, look for a guest, man. Pop, pop, pop some emails yeah, and I'm, stuff out there, man. If you it, ever get somebody, man, I'm, I, I, let's add more. Yeah, if we could find a guest to talk about that, that'd be really cool. Because that ain't going to be me, the expert on that one. Yeah. No, <laughs> I won't even take a shot at that. I'm not the expert either. <laughs> So what is an inpatient hospitalization stay like, man? What, what The crazy house, right? We're talking about all the crazy people. We're talking about the funny farm? The funny farm. Mm. <laughs> Take me away. <laughs> oh. Remember Dr. Demento? No. Oh, man, that was a childhood memory I just played out. I'm going to have to listen to that playback. I think that came out really well. Dr. Who? You never heard Dr. Demento? No. Oh, man. Don't think I have. These kids and my brother, hey Ronnie out there, man. My brother and I, he would he he turned me on too. We'd stay up late, come on like ten o'clock, whatever. We had to sneak the radio in our beds. We had to sit there. We had to stay up late, super late. It might have been eleven o'clock. Might even have been twelve. I don't remember. When I was little. And he'd bring on all these like Weird Al Yankovic and these kind of crazy songs and Doctor Demento and I don't know. You had to look it up, man. He was awesome, and I remember that that I just quoted out. The funny farm. They come and take me away to the funny farm. We need to dispel some of those myths and misconceptions tonight, Craig. Let's let's do it. I've no experience with that. You're, you're catching me completely cold on this one. And I and I yeah. So I wanted to start out by maybe what questions you do have. So maybe I'll, I'll hit some of these. Uh, I do usually pop a little bit of a Google search on on stuff just to kind of get. You know, geared in a little bit on what we what we've done and what we're doing, and um, there's an article that had a nice review. It'll be on the show notes, and uh, they had some questions. So as I go through these, maybe uh, it'll help you. But I thought I thought I want to answer just kind of real cold. We'll go through them so, so, sort of quick. But but I want to ask you, like, what kind of cold questions do you have when you when you think of an inpatient hospital? You think, oh man, somebody's been hospitalized. And first of all, have you ever heard of anybody? Have you ever known anybody? To be in a psychiatric hospital. Um, yeah, but it was, I, it was not a justified situation. I, I would have been shocked if you'd have said no. Yeah, it was justified not a justified not. situation. I'm, I'm not going to talk in too it. much detail about it. I'll, I might speak to you about it off, off, uh, gotcha. offline. But I don't even know of really... When I, when I think about a psychiatric hospital, I think about a movie. Right, where you have people walking around mumbling to themselves, and right, people really? sitting in wheelchairs staring at walls, and everything's white. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. One, yeah, that's the kind of that's. <laughs> and I'm not. I hope that doesn't sound bad, but that's just how my mind is programmed around thinking about mental hospitals. Well, it, there's a there's it a, is bad. There's a it hospital is bad because because I'm thinking, but but it's normal. I yeah. think, and that, and that, and that, thus is a little bit of the gen, uh, impetus, uh, genesis, if you will, of this of this show. Uh, honestly, the the true genesis of this show is this little article here, man. It's been in the news. Okay, Trump, President Trump. We're gonna take him to task tonight. I told you before the mics came on, we're gonna get a little political. I'm gonna call politics tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw down on it so, a little bit. So, fair warning to the listener: you can cut it off now. I think we're gonna talk <laughs> about some politics. Hope we don't yeah. lose any listeners. Nah, you'll enjoy it. I think because it's an important issue that has. I must be honest. I'm a little bit surprised by your response about that and the way that you sort of conceptualize. It. Again, why I love you on the show because well, I mean, growing it, up, there's a yeah. there's a hospital in Western North Carolina called Broughton. Oh yeah, Broughton and Hospital. North when I was a kid, and I'm West Virginia. You, 
You know, I'm I'm in my late forties now, but when I was a kid, that was oh, you're going to end up in Broughton. Oh, you're you're going to Broughton, place. yeah. And that was just oh man, Broughton. You know. And, and honestly, man, they kind of were in the fifties and sixties. They were scary places. Well, I wasn't. I'm not that old, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's point that out. Let's point that out. L- listen, audience, listening. That is not, 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 not even close to the way hospitalizations are now. It's just not. And uh, we'll talk about it, but I'm even more. I mean, I, I kind of thought this would be just to show we'd get done with it. But do you think that's a fear of people when they yes. go to a therapist? They're afraid to get oh, put yeah. into the get put into the hospital. Absolutely, really. Yeah, and they'll lie about suicidality about that. They'll, they'll minimize things and whatever. They'll be all sheepish with me. Like, well, I've even been asked, Craig, in a therapy office, dude. I've been asked point blank. If I tell you this, are you going to call anybody? Well, it depends on what you tell yeah. me, right? <laughs> well, no. I, I, I will launch in to tell them what I need to tell them. And basically that is, you know, no, I'm not going to freak out about that sort of stuff at all. I, I do have a requirement to make sure that, you know, you are safe from harming yourself or others. But just because you tell me a line or something, and I'll even say if you say, you know, you're, you're, you're suicidal right now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to you know, slam you in a hospital or that I even can. Just understand, you know. Now, I'm going to be able to call the authorities if you're absolutely going to do we've talked about that on the show before yeah so that that's all true but no i think people are scared to death about that matter of fact i might even suggest that people have avoided a whole therapy experience just because of that and that's totally unnecessary so i think this is a big bigger than i thought listening to you already right now issue to be honest with you um so I could see this coming up again. What do you think most people's impressions are? I mean, do you think they think it's just a I don't know. resort it, type hangout, I, you know? I'm surprised. By the pool, get better? Yeah, well, and that exists. That's kind of some of what we've got, dude. That's what we've got, some of it. Absolutely. I mean, you've, you've heard of these West Palm Beach resorts that people go to for, you know, rehabs and things. I mean, those are, those are inpatient stays. Yeah. Specifically for addiction. But uh, what do people think? I now, are we talking about hospitalizations for addictions or hospitalizations for mental health issues? Both. Both. Well, I guess they are both. Maybe, you know? maybe one and the same, but I'm like, I, like bi- extremely depressed, bipolar. Yeah. Do, those kind of, do those folks get hospitalized? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, a lot of the hospitalizations, particularly for mental health, are driven by I do not feel safe. I, I, I'm not able to make sure that I'm not going to complete the okay act of okay so let me say this if if you would have said a detox or a rehab center yeah i would have thought that yeah but mental somewhere health somewhere in arizona or malibu or some beach resort kind of right by the pool you know nice places to, to lay your head at night you know yeah whereas if i think about the mental hospital i think about you're you're on a cot surrounded by other people <laughs> who are oh, wow seeing visions and <laughs> yeah, pay off the trip. Seriously, I yeah, mean, no, I, I, and, and I hope I don't get judged for saying that. It's just, but that's just what comes to my mind. Yeah, no, I appreciate that uh, because I, I think, I think a lot of people are going to be, uh, you know, I mean, therapists that are listening to the show, don't bug your eyes out because I mean, as I did this and as we're talking about it, and and I, I was I was looking in the, um, in the news with Trump. I mean, I I, I think. The way I would respond to your question is, you're first of all, you're not in the. I don't even know if you're in the minority, dude, at all with with those myths. But <clears throat> but what I what what I would respond to your question is, it's very much people get wickedly confused about this whole system and how to manage it and and maneuver in with it. And so, uh, great levels of naivete is what I is how I would answer. You know, what do people? generally think about it I yeah mean, a great level it, of, if, of you, if, if i'm off base then i would say you're probably right because yeah. you think about terms you hear like the nut house and the yeah. funny in the funny farm and yeah you know and they're still so used people to are stere- stereotyping right away don't take me to the crazy house man yeah i ain't crazy crazy house holy cow so let's launch a little bit with this uh questions that you might have but 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 I, i'm gonna jump ahead and then come back one of the points that i wanted to make in, in show notes here is you know who shows up in a mental health facility who go what type of person goes and i'm going to maintain to you and that's why i asked you that question i would submit to you 
that a super high percentage, and I'm talking about the United States because I know that culture the best, but maybe, honestly, dude, even thinking about this worldwide, I don't know. Just shoot my own opinion here, by the way, guys. This is just my opinion. A super high percentage of people in the world have known or have been in a psychiatric facility at some point throughout their life. A super high percentage of people in the world have either been in or know of in their vast oh, circles um. of friends and family and people that they know at work. I'm going to cast a wide and you're net including, Are you including rehabs? I mean, what are you... Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Rehabs. Anything, by inpatient, I mean anything that you've been overnight at. And okay. We have crisis units. We have... Well, then I do. I think I do know yet. more than one. If we're including mm -hmm. rehabs and detox places, definitely. Yeah. This is not crazy people. It, this is, you know, I remind you of Bob Music's quote that I showed on the show from early in my career. The people that therapists we serve and, and ourselves is no thicker than a piece of dental floss, man. You can lose your, your, your sanity very easy, even with psychosis. Simply not sleeping for three 24-hour periods can do it. But you, you get yourself into super high stressful situations or combinations of that, your next door neighbor, wherever you live, can be in a in a psychiatric facility, man. I mean, mm. it happens often, often. Interesting. So let's is that yeah? Does that sound surprising? It does. Yeah, I think it does. See, that surprises me that that sounds surprising because of the world that I have lived in professionally. I mean, I yeah. Is, well, you see the world differently, obviously. It, from a different pr perspective, yeah, I guess because this is not uncommon at all. Yeah. What about the know. politics of it? You said we were going to talk politics. Yeah, we're going to go there. You know, I feel like I want to give the audience a little bit of uh, information about this. Information is good, right? Um, let me spitfire these questions super quick. I haven't even seen what they are. Do you have any questions about what happens with an inpatient facility? You know, write them down or, or, or make a note and let's, let's go at it. Does your facility treat patients with specific diagnosis only? This is like questions you might want to ask regarding a check-in at a Treatment facility. It comes directly from an article. That so we if have. you're checking in, these are questions right. to ask. Yeah. And, and, and that's a good thing to think of, you know, what, what diagnosis do you might have? But most, a lot of times in emergency rooms and whatnot, they're going to treat most anything, you know, so they'll, they'll fit you in. If I have other health or emotional problems, will I receive treatment for these problems also? Yes. We, we have, it's a full medical, you know, they're, they're usually able to, to handle, you know, medical crises and medical states or they're affiliated a lot of times with them. Does your facility require tests when admitted? If so, what are they? Not really any admissions criteria. Oftentimes, if, if you, you, you get evaluated, you get medically cleared, they do clear you, you know, to have, make sure you're not going to have a heart attack immediately or stuff like that. So you go through a medical clearance, but um, no major tests necessarily to, like, qualify or whatever. When will the initial evaluation take place? Kind of when you present or when, you know, we talked about the involuntary commitment on our show before. Uh, if, if you can follow into that place. I mean, if you're involuntary committed in Florida, it's called Baker Act, right? You can be picked up by the police because a magistrate of some sort has uh, deemed that you might be a danger to yourself or others. So uh, again, I'll, I'll remind the audience, we talked about that with suicidal, homicidal episode. When will uh, evaluate me when I admit it? Who will evaluate me? Uh, oftentimes they have a qualified professional psychiatric administered person that's on the team. And, and they, they meet with you and try to figure out what's going on. I have sent people to emergency rooms or directly to hospital admissions from my therapy office. We call together. And, you know, we, we facilitate that process. So it can happen in different ways. But um, what are the person's qualifications or title or qualified therapist or psychiatrist or whatnot? Will this person continue to treat me? Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, you know, you go into an emergency room, you get an evaluation, you tell them what's going on. They bring in their psych consult. You know, they evaluate you, they clear you medically, and they deem that, uh, yeah, we need to take you up. Uh, in, in Gaston County, for instance, we, our hospital has the seventh floor. You've heard of that, right? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I thought about that earlier. Because yeah. I worked at the hospital for three, yeah, yeah. three and a half years when I got out of school in technology. The seventh, and the seventh floor. floor was the, the seventh floor was the, <laughs> you know, that was the, yeah, stay away from there. No, it's not to stay away from. It's crazy way we look at things. Uh, will I be seen by this professional on a regular basis? It's, it's interesting, this article and the way they ask questions. I mean, 
what do you hear from all of that, Craig, and, and rapid firing through this article's questions and my kind of thoughts on it? And do you have any specific questions? I don't think I have any specific questions right now. I mean, what do I hear? I'm, I'm not really sure, man, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's interesting because what I hear, it, that naivete and confusion that people have about this topic, I think plays out to me and whoever and wherever this article came from. Those are questions that, that I just read down and kind of did that. I mean, I don't know. I don't even have people asking me those types of questions in, in the hospital. Maybe they're wondering about it. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm seeing people that are psychiatric destabilized and, and they're not thinking through things like that rationally, right? Because a lot of times I will say hospitalizations happen uh, in or during like crisis states. People are not real oriented sometimes. You know, we do mental, mental status exams, and they're not able to even tell me, like, uh, s- simple questions. I, normal people, like ne- our next-door neighbors, Craig, you know, who, who's the president of the United States? They may know, they may not know. You know, what, what day of the week is it? They may know, they may not know. Hey, you know, uh, start at 100 and count backward by sevens. They, they're just cognitively not able to go, you know, 93. Yeah, uh, eighty, eighty, you know, they struggle with 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 things like that. So they're they're in crisis a lot of times when you're going into an inpatient setting. Is my point there? Um, but I think there's a lot of confusion about it. Um, let me hit levels of care. We have an article about that on there. Hospital settings. A lot of times, your Gaston Memorial Hospital is one of our local. Uh, well, it used to be called that. Now I guess it's Caremont. You know, Presbyterian in in Charlotte has a hospital, Presbyterian facility. A lot of times in hospitals, they have a dedicated wing or floor or space. Um, And then you have psychiatric inpatient settings. It's kind of, you know, like that as well, where you're you're in a facility in a hospital. They do have places where you can go that treat just specifically uh, psychiatric or mental health stuff. Uh, you know, in, in, in the resorts, kind of, in the mountains and stuff, Craig, where you have nice, nice ponds and facilities and stuff. And insurance pays for them. Otherwise, they're private pay and they're quite expensive. But um, you got general medicine and surgical hospitals. Not as common, but they have uh, built in an ability to handle psychiatric events and such. What was that? What are you playing around with there? You'll see in a minute. All right. You, you threw me off guard. Uh, let me see, alcohol rehab facilities, you, you mentioned and talked about that before. Nursing homes have consults that they'll bring in, so nursing homes could be considered inpatient hospitals. We have partial hospitalization settings, and that's where you don't stay overnight, but you go all day, every day for as long as you need care. Um, and you have in, in, in intensive outpatient programs where you have three, sometimes four nights a week. For, a lot of times that's for substance abuse but that could be for outpatient uh, mental health as well Uh, and then interestingly this article pointed out community mental health centers that i wanted to point out has big has kind of changed but but community mental health centers is a term and i know i've mentioned on the show before we kind of downgraded the insane asylums and what we've talked about to let's close those down because they were largely ineffective and great mis abuses were of patients and stuff it's crazy what happened to those people we shut that stuff down and built the community mental health centers across the country to serve people as they're back home but that has since really changed to where state care has been you know kind of it's been fluctuating over the last 10 15 20 years but that's a little bit of the different levels of care that we have and i I guess again the reason why i answered your question craig before how, how do i see people seeing this stuff I understand these things. I just rattled through that. I hope I didn't make anybody's brain blow apart. I realize this is very confusing system in accessing it. It's 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 overwhelming. And you do that in a in a in a in a in a crisis state where you're not really functioning that clearly anyway. Whoa, that's that's tough, right? That's that's tough to try to figure you know figure things out. Um Let's see, it's about time for a break, Craig. You got something you've got queued up. I don't know what he's doing, y'all. <laughs> he's got something cooking. He's smiling. His eyes are glimmering. He's got already popped play. I don't know where he's going, but we want to do that before or after the break. You decide. 
We'll do it after. After the break. Yeah. It's kind of along the lines of politics, and oh. so we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Love it, love it, love it. Let's take a break mm-hmm. for our, uh, well, I don't know if we call it sponsor or not. We'll, we'll, well it's not it. a sponsor, but it's a new way for you to support our show. Um, we have developed a partnership, if you will, or an affiliate ship, if you want to call it that, with a company called Whole Family Products. And let, me, let me jump in, Craig, if I could. You can. Because I've been thinking about this, and uh, I, I don't know much about it, to be honest with you. I haven't researched it. Kind of trusted you. You mentioned it and popped it on, and we, we ran with it. But the reason why I, I, I trusted it is because I've heard you talk about it before. And I think this is a relationship you've had with these guys, and I'll just give you my sort of ignorant, unaware knowledge of it. Sounds really cool. Sounds really neat. And, 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 and I would even suggest guys listening that, this is, this is right along the lines of what we've been talking about with nutrition and your body and understanding how is health uh, a, a part of this and, and some of the new stuff, such as CBD oils and whatnot. Go to our website because it's a way to support our show. I think a lot of people are buying these products and stuff anyway, Craig, even so far as bodybuilding and whatnot, right? So help us out. Go to our site and tell them about it, man, because it sounds awesome. Yeah, if you go to our site and you scroll down to the sponsors section, there's a there's a graphic on there for Whole Family Products. If you click on it from there, that'll take you to their website. They've got affordable natural health supplements, including CBD oil, CBD cream, and natural hormone cream. And I'm just going to tell you about the. I'll just tell you the categories. They have anti aging and anti aging body and spa, natural hormone creams, pro, uh, progesterone, DHEA. Um, nutritional supplements, weight loss and sports nutrition, um, specific health creams, and uh, they've got over 126 products. I have used some of these products myself. Um, I think I'm going to switch my CBD over to this company um, because I know they produce quality products. And I used to sell these products on Amazon, and I got great reviews on Amazon from the... uh, from the women's products and other products that I was selling, so that I, I know that I know these are good quality products. I do know um, the owner of the company, and um, they're just great people. And I'm happy that we're able to partner with them in this way to support our podcast. So go to our website, doitherapistize.com. Click on the link there for Whole Family Products, and uh, and help us out. And back to the show there with what we're talking about now here. I think it might be time to get political, man. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get down to it. I like it. Uh, you know, because, uh, by the way, guys, all I mean by political is we got hot button issue uh, going on right now. And, uh, Craig, you, you, what, do, what do you got? You, how do we want to weave this in? You got a, what, what do you got? Clip? Well, no, I was just looking at your notes and on, on the on the politics on the sh- on the show note here and what are you th- what are you thinking you said trump would seem wrong well, i'm just talking about what you're what you what you well, play it, it, it kind of plays it? into it it kind of plays into the political side of it and you said trump would be would seem wrong with his belief that inpatient stays are the answer to mass shootings um right so is that, i don't know what all i hear when i hear uh, a news clip about a mass shooting is there's mental health issues out there. Yeah. So I don't know if, if Trump or anybody is saying that inpatient stays are the answer. Is that, is that the case? He is. Okay. He, he did. Um, I know he said that there's it, no longer hospitals. And he caught a lot of flack. Of right. He, and he caught a lot of flack for it. And, and, I, and I really wanted to, to use this platform. To, as I said, it was kind of the impetus of the show because... It, it, you know, we should have covered it anyway, or we would have probably got to it anyway. I hadn't thought about it, but um, the confusion and the, and, the, and the important things that people need to know about a hospitalization is a big part of mental health treatment, and, and a lot of confusion out there about it. But then I saw this come up, and I'm like, you know, you hear mass shootings, and you start hearing, you know, mental health issues and whatnot, and, and all I mean by political is us as a society understanding kind of as best we can without being trained and having so many years' experience in it. Uh, you know, reading up and learning about it. So I, I feel an obligation almost having, claiming to be one of those folks to, to really help with that because my greatest fear with this, Craig, politically, if you will, or um, stereotypically, if you will, 
or uh, discriminatorily, if you will, you know, is that people with mental health or mental illness issues get get demonized in some way, and and, and we and we fall backward into the fears about mental health, which don't need to be there, and. And that was honestly the impetus of what the horrible things that we did with what we would call quote unquote insane asylums back in the day. I mean, these were scary people, dude. I don't want them living in my neighborhood. I know we could take that there fella up the road and they'll take him away. And we did. That was that was scary times and those people were not treated well by society or when they did get discharged, if they did and whatnot, in in, in communities and, and, and we can't do that with, with mental health today in 2019 we understand we're talking about mental health we're talking about you and me and our neighbors and most people with depression that is severe with bipolar that makes us act crazy at times and whatnot but but so i i really don't want those fears to be perpetuated or lumped into as like the excuse of mass murders and mass shootings because that is not the truth it's really not from an article that we have on there i didn't spend a lot of time on it but quote Unquote. Most of the research shows that people with mental illness are actually less likely than the general population to go on to shoot somebody else or to commit mass violence, said Dr. Nathan uh, Jonathan Metzel, a psychiatrist and director of the Center for Medicine, Health, and Society at Vanderbilt University in Tennessee. To be honest, It's quite frustrating as a psychiatrist to have this kind of false narrative be perpetuated because it is a distraction from the story we should be telling. Here, here, couldn't agree more, dude. Like, that's... I I want to drive that home. And and, and some of the things... I got an article. We'll quote Trump a little bit. But some of the fears that that people have are very natural. And I don't think Trump did anything wrong, by the way. We're going to talk about it today. I, I think he's, I, I, what do I know? I don't know the guy, but I, I think he's trying to really think about in a genuine way, what can we really do to help these serious issues? But, but, but when you're operating on, on fear, you can really make some misguided policies. And I'm fearful people in power at times are operating out of fear. And I, we need to understand this a little bit more. Okay, I've ranted a little bit. What are you hearing and what are you thinking? And should we go to your thing? Well, I'll pause there because I'm going to say something, and if we want to cut it out, we can. And if not, we can leave it in. So there's obviously mental health problems in our country, right? There's obviously mental health problems. Right. Um, There's obviously an issue where these people are killing large numbers of people. Mm Mm-hmm. And sane, I mean, would you say that sane people don't do that? Would you say that, I mean, I guess you could just be angry and, but a lot of these people that you see on the news who've done these hideous acts, they have these blank looks on their faces, man. And it's like, there's nothing behind those eyes. It's like, I don't know how to describe, if you've seen a picture of these people, then you know what I'm talking about. Blunted affect and uh, sometimes, you know, you could say even probably symptoms of anhedonia and, uh, you know, almost catatonic-like stuff sometimes. You know, yeah, I've seen that. I, I, I kind of know the look that you're looking at. And, and sometimes that is absolutely a function of psychosis and whatnot. But sometimes that's just a function of, of Asperger's. Where your lack of facial expression. Okay, well, I haven't heard anybody say these folks had Asperger's at all. Sometimes. They could be autistic, slightly. They could be Asperger's. They can also be appearing that way because they're stressed out, but they knew what they did, and they wanted to do what they did, and they were really making their Well, where I'm going with this thing is is there's a doctor. Her name is Kelly Kelly Brogan, B-R-O-G-A-N, kellybroganmd.com. She was on the Joe Rogan show, Mm -hmm. and she said that in certain people— that there is a, I don't want to say problem, but their liver doesn't process these mm. SSRIs. Well, yeah, and it I basically remember. poisons the person and turns them into violent people. And she gave an example on Joe's show. She said this guy went into, he was an accountant, 
And he went in to his doctor because he was having some anxiety about his job. And uh, he got on, I think it was Paxil. Is Paxil an SSRI? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, is it an SSRI or is it? Uh, I thought, it she, I thought she said Paxil, I believe, but believe it's an SNRI. nonetheless, whatever it was, the guy strangled his, his 11-year-old kid to death, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, she says that this, this liver enzyme doesn't process the drug properly. And the first question she asks when she hears about a mass shooting is, I wonder what drug they're on, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't want to live in a world where I can say, hey, I think Chris is a little wacky, and you get hauled off to some hospital. Right. But it could still be a mental, there's still a mental health issue going on there, I think. Well, but, it, okay, so should we take another pause in case we want to cut it all out? <laughs> 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 no, I think everything you said is it's fine, and it's okay to talk about, Craig, and I'm glad you are. So let, let's look at that in sort of the reverse angle for, for, for one. Right. If you look at it after the event, an event, you can say, oh, hey, there's probably going to be a high likely they've got something going on. Sure. I don't, I'm not going to begrudge that as much, but let's turn it around to the other side where I'm sitting. And I'm going to say, I see all kinds of people with mental health issues. I mean, literally all day long, every day for 20 years or however long it's been. Okay. And I have seen nobody. And no indication. And so far as I know, n- how many people have I come across now, Craig? <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's right? everybody. I'm saying there's certain people who... Super rare, dude. Super rare. Because there's... It, it, a mental health diagnosis is an incredibly poor indicator for... She said, it's a, she said it's a testable condition mm-hmm. that you could test for it. Mm-hmm. So... Perhaps that's the answer. I think it's or at hard, least some of it. I think it's a very complicated issue that needs a lot of these kind of discussions. But, in, but instead having. of looking into that thing, we want to have a gun ban mm-hmm. or, or increase gun laws or, or, or gun restrictions. And I'm not saying that, that some of those things aren't good ideas. You know, I don't want anybody to think that I'm, I'm trying to stay neutral on the gun issue here with our, with our show. Picked up on that. But what I'm saying is people are demonizing guys that own guns legally when it could be a whole different a whole different issue man it, it i really think it's a combination of 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 issues craig and and psychotropic medications and what we understand about them and what we don't understand about them is 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 certainly can be said to be in that mix uh we do know that that side effects Again, they're super, I'm going to say super rare. That's just, that word super is my opinion, but uh, it, it's rare that people, I mean, are going to have that level of disruption in their, in their life where they're going to take action. It, it, in, instead, it oftentimes is some sort of, of, of break sometimes that happens that's completely unpredictable. Now, 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 look at what I just said closely there. A lot of times, it's some sort of break that that happens with somebody that is completely unpredictable. Now that's a mental health reality. But hold on, hold on. Let me go further with this. That's a that's a mental health reality. But when you look back at a lot of these cases, like we've had some local here. Remember the restaurant that was drove through? Now that look, that, that guy had the look right, on his face, man. Okay. He, he, he even history. told his family members to take his guns away a couple weeks earlier because okay, right. he, he was feeling crazy. Right. And then he drove the, his car through a restaurant. Right. Those folks, there is no history of mental health issue. No, he had, he had mental health. He was already he was suffering. He was being treated for mental for health how issues. Long, is I don't I'm know saying. how long. For what I'm saying is for how long. He was on medication. That, before that, how long are people engaged in something? My, my point here is that you, me, or the next fella can go through some stuff, trauma or whatnot, and find ourselves really quickly into a space where we really take action that shoot people. I mean, the suicide, a spousal shooting, you know, taking out your family. You know, there, there are a lot of instances when we look at the definition of mass murder where multiple people are, are taken out in tragic ways. Those are snap crisis situations. and. and and, and there's, a, there's a lot of different things going on there. 
There really are a lot of different issues that are happening all at once, some of which are acute circumstances, not long-term mental health clients. Yeah, man. I'm not saying that everybody who commits murder is on an antidepressant drug. Right. I'm not saying that everybody who takes antidepressant drugs is going to get a, an AR-15 and, and open fire in a public place. I'm just saying that what, what she says, what, and she says there's journals and science to back all this up. I'd love to have her on the show. She happens to listen to this. Get her, man. I may reach Call. out to her and see if I can get her on here. Call. I'd love to talk to her. But um, she says that there are a small number of people who are affected by this thing that, where they can't produce, where they can't break down this. Their liver will not break down this SSRI, and it, and it poisons their system. And, and instead of helping them, it makes them worse. Several months ago, you played that for me. I think we spent a little bit of time looking at that one together. It's interesting, and I, and I emphasize the word small, I suspect. But just to, just to give you an idea, again, as, you're, as you were talking, it occurred to me, you know, in looking at this issue, um, you know, substance abuse is, is a big factor here. We can't rule that out. That has nothing to do with mental health, per se. I mean, I'm, we have a big blending between mental health and substance abuse, so it's all sort of mental health and substance abuse in my field. But that, but that could be somebody that just starts tripping out on, on drugs, even experimentally with college, young people, you know, idealist perspective, beginning to experiment with drugs, maybe not even addiction, like we've talked about addiction, and they start getting loopy. And an idealistic perspective and a social media influence, particularly purposely perpetuated by various extremist groups, whether it be, you know, right winged extremist groups or Muslim extremist groups or other extremist groups with religion, whatnot. People are affected and you put the right combination of any number of those things together, including psychotropic medications. And you can have a break for any one of those things or any combination of those things. Right. Yeah. There's there's different reasons why people commit murder, right? Yeah, today's not today's the twelfth, September the twelfth. I'm sure that the guys on nine eleven weren't all on psychotropic medicines, were they? Dude, they were probably <laughs> they were saying to fly the planes. I Holy mean, cow! Good grief! I mean, right? And but, they passed but, pilot tests and everything. Yeah, but I think that where I was, where this whole thing started, was maybe the answer is not. Reopening up these insane asylums, but reevaluating some of the things we're doing with antidepressants and drugs and, and the way we treat people with mental health. In, in, in general, in, in, in a broad scope, like guys, this is a part of our sophisticated society that has grown and matured. And uh, what's the word I want to look at? Sort of, uh, what is it when you're, you develop, ev- evolved? You know, when you've developed along the way, it, it, our field has evolved, and it's a part of our society and needs to be. We're a sophisticated, you know, third world, first world, second world. Our world has progressed to where we understand mental health a whole lot better. And, and, and we, we, it's, it's a little bit newer in the history of man. We've talked about that before, but um, can't go back to thinking everybody's crazy and just stuff them in the same asylums. Let's let's instead refine and continue to grow all of these forms and the levels of care that I just mentioned. Is that what happened in the past? I mean, how did people get admitted to those insane asylums yeah, it, it in the fifties and sixties? And kind of like paddy wagons grabbed up. You're acting crazy, taking you out of town. So did you have to meet certain thresholds of 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 care? Yeah. You know, I mean, did you? I mean, I can't answer. I'm going to say I don't. Sure, know. Surely, to goodness, I couldn't say. Hey, Chris is acting funny, and the next thing you know, guys in white coats are hauling you off to. The- <clears throat> I'm going to say I don't know. <laughs> honestly, I'm going to I'm going to say I don't know because I wasn't even alive until 2000 or 1973, and, and so before that, in the 40s and 50s, you're, the question is, what was the criteria of admission to those old psychiatric institutions? And I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting history question in my yeah in my field. Well, I'm sure everybody's listening has heard about the red red flag laws that's, that are being proposed. Yeah, a, so yeah, you know that 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 goes back to the what institutes somebody who's a threat, right? Yeah, and how do you define that, that if somebody's a threat? Yeah, and we talked about Parkland. I think that guy had I think 39 times 
law enforcement visited that kid. Yep. Before he did something. I remember that. And in they our let show. him they let him go thirty nine times. And thirty nine times he was stable. And the fortieth time he He wasn't. Yeah. And that Well, I would say he's probably wasn't stable the thirty nine times either. Not when he started. But for whatever reason he got but he at got, the end, he, he was. He got cleared. But at the end, he was. And I remember back at that show, we got to make that a short, too. I'll find it. Maybe we will as in relation to this. Because 39 times, he was cleared psychiatrically stable. And it was quite a while before the 40th time occurred. And, and guys, that's the, that's the conundrum. I mean, that's the conundrum. What do you do with that? How do you manage that? Because any one of those 39 times, I guess... If we was living in the 40s or 50s or whenever it was, we literally would have put him in to an insane asylum for good. Or for years. We mm. can't do that. For well, years. Literally, we, like this we, is somebody's kid. If we did, those kids wouldn't have got murdered. Maybe. How do you predict that event? That's the rub and that's the conundrum because we can't very well. We can't. Yeah, it's, that's tough. We cannot, we do not have good predictors. Even if you are majorly decompensated in a bipolar, manic episode, I can't predict if that's going to happen very well effectively. I can say, whoa, yo, you need to be in a hospital. Let's get you treated. There's definitely some stuff going on. But if you become non-compliant with your treatment, I don't want to take the medications. I still cannot, Craig, predict if that is going to be an event or not. I, I can't. You, you can't. But So then how do you stop these things from happening? That's the conundrum. It and really it, it, is. If, if you do take guns, I think some of these politicians are talking about having programs where you turn, turn, turn your guns in. Yeah. Dude, people yeah. are going to commit. People are going to. They're trying to ban knives in London now because so many people are getting murdered by knives. Yeah, I mean, the, you the can't numbers, you can't stop people from doing horrible things. But the count, the counter to that though is that you certainly can stop the ability for you know AKs and and mass. You can stop that, but if, well, there's a will, there's a way. What, people people what, in foreign countries walk into supermarkets and blow themselves up. They do, they do, and it's crazy stuff. I mean, we know one of the biggest impacts of gun control are decreased suicide rates. It's a serious issue. I have it in my personal circle right now. It's all I'm going to say somewhat recently. Okay. And, and would that have been prevented if, if there were locking mechanisms or, uh, you know, what have you? I, I don't, I, I can't speak on it. I don't know. But I know that people of proponents of gun control have purported that decreased suicide rates are significant in areas where uh, some limits are, are proposed that are reasonable. I'm very proponent of the right to bear arms. And I, I, I'll say that proudly as an American. But the, the issue is it's complicated, and we can't go off on any one thing likely is what we're going to find to help with these rates. And unfortunately, too, let's set a realistic goal. Mr. Trump and those in power need to kind of understand we're not going to get down to zero, Craig. We're we're not. We're not. We're, we're definitely not. This is and an the, event. The, Go ahead. Sorry. The thing that concerns me about the gun control proposals, uh, I don't think they would have stopped any any of the any of the mass shootings. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I w- this is why I heard this this metaphor. I'll tell you a metaphor that I heard, and it was, I was listening to something somewhere, and this wise person looked at me. Not didn't look at me, but. Uh, said on the show, and I think it was about gun control, Craig. I, I, I could swear it was. He said, let me tell you about deer whistles. You ever hear about deer whistles? Never have. Deer whistles, man. He's like, you ever been hit? He's like, no. He's like, well, why do you think? Like, I don't know, but I've got a deer whistle on my car. He's like, what's that? Evidently, it's a two, three dollar thing. Lots of people in West Virginia know in hunting lands in North Carolina mountains, man. You pop a little deer whistle on your car. It's a three dollar piece of equipment. It little whistles with the wind or whatever, makes this high pitched noise, and it shoots the deers away from the road in front of you, literally. Sweet. Deer whistles that on is your car. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was talking about this, uh, it, it, actually, and, and dude sitting next to me at the restaurant I was with looked at me and he said, I got two of them on my car. <laughs> 
I'm like, really? He's like, absolutely, man. Yeah, that is great. So do deer whistles prevent his car from being hit from a deer? We'll never know. We'll never know. A lot of people driving the mountains of North Carolina with about ever hitting a deer. But if you got a deer whistle on your car, <laughs> you know, I kind of want a $2 deer whistle now, to be honest with you. I, I've never hit a deer with my car. Will I? I don't know. I did Chances one time. Are. My dad did when we was driving as a kid. But you see my point? That's the conundrum here. It's the same conundrum. Now, I wish we had a $2 whistle. Yeah, but I don't think you, you can know, just not do head. anything. So, oh, we don't know. It's going to happen. You know, we, can't, we can't predict, so we're not going to do, do anything. Yeah. I think you, you can't do that either. Bump up the efforts and, and, and commitment to mental health treatment, intensive outpatient programs, partial hospitalization, hi, uh, psychiatric hospitals, Insurance reimbursement for rehabs, substance abuse issues. You know, the, uh, I'll go to a quote in a newspaper article if I could. Right? I told you I was going to give you a couple quotes. Our prisons have become the state's largest mental health provider, Pence said in 2015. Today, that begins to change. Uh, you know, Pence is the vice president. Yeah. I kind of agree with that sense. You know, the, the prison system has a whole lot of stuff in there that's mental health and substance abuse related and needs treatment. Hopefully, way before these guys that are really criminal behavior are getting so indoctrinated into their life of mental health leading to crime. So, I agree with that statement. And any one of these levels of care, that's part of the answer. I love that mental health is in the picture, as well as uh, racism on police shootings, as well as uh, gun control mechanisms. There's a three part points that people tend to land on. I'm glad mental health's in there. Let's not demonize it and put it out in charge of lead and do some of these things that people are proposing, though. That's what I'm really trying to lay out. And I'll throw psychiatric medications in there as well. Not do some of the things people are, would you say? Some of the things like this. I'll shoot to it. Good, good, good segue. Quote from evidently President, we don't have these institutions anymore and people can't get proper care. Trump lamented at a New Hampshire campaign rally not long after the latest shootings. You know, again, you know, it, we have a lot of levels of care. That I just kind of, I know it's confusing, but we have a lot of treatment facilities, a lot of treatment options out there. We just need to learn about them and use them and, and, and get them paid for. Get them so you really see, do we it. have a lot of treatment facilities though? Because the only ones I know of are the ones we've already mentioned the seventh, right. the seventh floor up at, up at Caramont and Broughton. Yeah, the state has so many beds. Uh, well, yeah, no, Craig, yeah, a psychiatric facility at Presbyterian Hospital. Okay, I, I did not know that. Psychiatric it's new. unit at, at uh, CMC, Carolina's Medical Center. Okay, they renamed themselves Atrium or whatever. They have, yeah, I, I don't, I, I can't speak intelligently about number of beds because it's just, it's all needs to be regulated i mean every state has to have a certain amount of beds available and and immediately available for acute care i mean there's a, there's a lot that's set into place already so what yeah. do you think we should do with criminals if somebody commits a crime do you think they should be put through some kind of psychiatric evaluation to see if they're mentally ill and if they are put into a hospital mm. as opposed to a prison and does that kind of thing still happen we're somewhat okay on time. Let me finish this and we'll come back to the prison in about 47 seconds if we could. Right? Um, Even as a young guy, I said, how does that work? That's not a good thing, Trump said, referring to uh, people ending up on the streets in, in, you know, and in jails in New York after the state closed large psychiatric hospitals in the 60s and 70s. So he got trounced for, for those statements, President Trump did, and, and, and somewhat deservingly but 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 i do believe and hope but what do i know that the the people in charge are really kind of fretting and fangling trying to figure out what you know your question right like yeah what do what do we do with this issue yeah. so back to your your thing about prisons and stuff i mean i, I don't know Re reframe it again what are you, what are you asking because it just break, it kind of breaks my heart to think that people are really struggling well, I just said if, if people are, if, if mentally ill people end up in prison. What do we do? I mean, should there be some kind of psych, psych, psychiatric evaluation at sentencing or during trial? And, or, and is there already there is. that? There is. We, we, do, we do psych testing. You, know, you can go through 
evals were good forensic testers and whatnot, uh, determine sanity, you know, you hear legal tricks being played with that sometimes, but it's also like, are you sane enough to stand trial? I mean, we, we do, we do, it's incorporated in there. It's not like we're completely ignorant and we don't, we don't consider those things in those systems. And there's good treatment in, in jails. I mean, that's, that's sometimes where, where people come across psychotropic medications, get stabilized with their chemistry, you know, kind of really get, get clear on diagnostics and, and, and figure their life out and get quote-unquote rehabilitated. <clears throat> so that happens in jails. They also find religion a lot of times. There's great chaplain services, and, 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 and that, you could argue, is pretty much part of mental health in the way that it operates. Love it when religion blends with formal sciences of mental health, by the way. You know? Uh, so, but... I hate to think that we could have done a better job as a society with younger folks screening out things in school systems with qualified people not doing paperwork. I made that statement before about school counselors. Let's let them do counseling. Let's let them do mental health services, trainings and screenings, you know. We can do that. And so that the earlier with mental health we catch stuff, as with most medical stuff, way better prognosis, man, way better. So we're talking then about a lot of child services. You know, children have a lot of the signs that we now know what to look for. Craig, I can now diagnose sometimes early, early kids, bipolar disorders. We used to think, oh, no, I can't do that to 18, 20 years old. No, I, we can see stuff like that now and treat it, both with cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, I didn't even mention in levels of care residential facilities, which a lot of times, you know, you hear group homes for kids and wilderness programs. That's a part of our system, by the way. You know, but we can give treatment to these kids early on in life. We need to, we need to be as aware of that and, and, and continue to evolve the mental health systems uh, as, as we go to, to, to build it up. In addition to probably some gun control mechanisms, in addition to our cultural awarenesses about racisms and, and different injustices with you know, subgroups of people and whatnot. I was just reading through your article here. It's just... You know, you know, it's interesting that people aren't even on the same page about solving some of these problems. And, and I look at this one right here, and it says, Trump's uh, support for new mental institutions is drawing pushback from many in the mental health profession who say that an appro that approach would do little to reduce mass shootings in the United States and incorrectly associates mental illness with violence. On the other hand, I just cited this Dr. Kelly Brogan, who says that, Mentally ill people who are taking these SSRIs are pushed to violence because of this issue. It's complicated. So you, you can't right? even solve the problem if you can't agree what the problem is. You know, right? It, it's it's a com It is because it's so complicated. I love the dialogue that even you and I are having on this show, and and we need to in, to continue that having. And because there, there are confusions. Let's be honest. Do we understand the neurochemistry process of the brain, dude? <laughs> We've talked about that recently. It blows my mind. No, I don't think we that. do. And I think we're flooding it with so much stuff that it's... I, re I read an article today that said that um, this group did a study. They studied people in, from the late 80s, and they took a group of people from 2006. And the people had the same lifestyle, same exercise, ate the same kind of foods. And the people in 2006 were some percentage more, were some percentage heavier. So the, the argument is that it's physically it's, like obesity. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And one of the theories is it's all the crap we put in our food that yeah. jacks up our hormones, all the preservatives and. Hormones are a big part of this. You know, so we're putting so much stuff into our bodies, man, that we don't have a clue what it's doing. And, and, and again, it, you know, you ask, what do we do? You know, nutrition. I, I was blown away at our recent episode. If you're just catching this one and didn't hear the one on, <clears throat> you know, the keto diet and, and, and what Dana so courageously shared with us about her experience. It's, that was amazingly cool to me, Craig. Yeah, those are factors too, man. Um, you know, it's... it's uh, I know we're coming up on time here. Let's taxi in for a landing. I, 
I just really want the main takeaway to be mental health diagnosis is a very poor indicator of, of mass shootings. Period, dot, dash. I'm going to add a couple of exclamation points But perhaps points there, not. Man. I mean, I'll put that Joe Rogan segment on our show notes. Oh, man. You want to throw down on this? I thought we were taxiing in for landing. We just well, ripped we are. the engine no, back up. No, I don't, I don't think there's much more to say because neither of us are experts on that topic. But there's at least one doctor out there who yeah. says that there's that – there's, and she said there's medical journals that back everything she's saying up. No, and, I, and it's a I, testable I, I, condition. I would say I am a little bit of an expert on that topic. In, 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 in being able to diagnose mental health conditions and being trained in this with my life's work being put into this, I feel as though I can make the statement because of my entire career that having a mental health diagnosis is a poor predictor of an event. I'm not saying that. That's not what I said. I said that there is a small segment, based on what she's saying, of people who do not process these SSRIs and it poisons them and they become violent. Yeah, and that, and that has absolute my ear of interest. And, and, and that's maybe that's, a, that's not the deer whistle, Craig. I was just going to say, maybe that's an example of a deer whistle, right? The $2 P easy thing that we could do. Hey, you know, that is a deer whistle in this sense, though. I mean, if you had a regular screening of that, you know, maybe we, maybe we get developed in our society, Craig, where we can have a, a, a paneling as a regular routine for, just like we do with vaccines, and, and, and this paneling of testing how our body operates with iron and how our B12 is, is coordinated and all the, the hundreds of hormones that we have that we really get to a point of paneling that out and understanding all of those interactions a hell of a whole lot more than we do today, including what she's talking about. Well, hell, we just won't give them any Paxil. That'd be a great deer whistle as, it, a, it, as a part of this. If it is indeed a testable thing, then yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a small component, though. I think it's a small component. Seriously. Could be. But, I mean, if you think about it, there are a lot of mass shootings that are happening these days. Mm -hmm. But it's still, in the grand scheme of things, a very, very small, small, small fraction of people. who, who We got, to what, 250 million oh, yeah. people in the country? How many, yeah. how many mass shootings do we have every year? Exactly. I mean, we're, we're talking about it doesn't even register on the scale. Very small percentage of right. So there, I'll, there, I'll even, you, there you go. I, I was able to kind of win you over, I think, honestly, and myself at the same time. Do you remember that big stack of paper that I had of events that happened long ago that were mass, mass events? You know, so it's, it, this is also not new. This has been with us as long as man's been around. Yeah, I remember that list, and, mm -hmm. I, and I do. Mm -hmm. But it seems that, that I, well, maybe we can pull that back up at some point. Uh, it's probably a link. I don't have that article. <laughs> but you could Google it, actually, and, and see lists like that. I don't think it's very hard for the listening audience nor you to, you know, to, to kind of really find. But, uh, Craig, how would you summarize us up a little bit? Let's, let's, let's definitely taxi in and not, not rev our engines up again. Man, I don't know how to summarize this one. Yeah? You know. Was it interesting? It was. Yeah, it was interesting. It kind of changes my perception of mental hospitals i think then we've definitely accomplished one of my main goals yeah you know yeah absolutely because there's you know we really we really didn't get to actually talk a little bit about the fear that's why i said i, th I think that i think that inpatient hospitalization needs to come up again this was probably you know pretty good a bit of an of an overview because i do have people that are freaked out man i wanted to get into the details of like you know when you walk into facilities sometimes and you're in acute crisis state you, you will get kind of freaked out i mean i don't want people to be freaked out because it's good treatment and, and it's really necessary and people can get stable but I've, I've heard people say like oh my god that was the worst experience i've ever had in my life i mean they come in my office and they're telling me this craig they're like yo I mean, it's, 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 the dude had this crazy look in his eye they took my shoes man they gave me slippers I had that gown thing. They wouldn't let me tie anything. It's, it is built for safety. They had bars on the windows. I mean, you know, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. There was literally a padded room. I walked by and I saw a padded room. There ain't nothing in there but pads on the walls and floors. <laughs> it's, it can creep people out. 
But we do that because it is a holy and fully safe environment as much as we can make it. So, so I, I did want to talk about some of those details of what do you really see? What do you really hear? How does this really work? I think there's a, a great curiosity about it that uh, I, I'm afraid we didn't do a good enough job getting to tonight. But my brain is fried, brother. I think we got to shut her down. I think so, yeah. Let's do it, man. Uh, where are we going next, Craig? Tell us. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I have no idea, man. We'll figure it out, though. I, uh, I have not been able to get prepared with that. i like to have a little teaser for you for our next show, but we do have a, a cool guest coming up um, that, uh, that I'm not ready to, uh, to announce or say, but I'm excited. to. Uh, I, got, I got his book just today. As a matter of fact, Craig, I'm going to read it. Well, gonna I am going to reach out to Dr. Brogan. Yeah. See if Do I can this. get her on here, man. Do this, man. Take us out of here. Through a therapistize.com, folks. That's where you can find out more information about our show. We got individual entries for each show. We also have some show notes and links on each one out there to revelant. Uh, re- to revelant. Revelant. To revelant information that we share on the shows. You can find links to Facebook and Instagram. Sign up for our email list. Appreciate it if you would subscribe and give us a five star on your favorite podcast platform. Please tell your friends. And we would love it if you would purchase some products from Whole Family Products by clicking on the link from our site. It's a little late, Craig, but it was a good night, man. I appreciate you. Enjoyed it.